guess I better put this on since that's what I was wearing through the streams. Hey there guys, how you doing? So for those of you that joined me during my live streams on this channel for the last couple weeks, you'll know that I was playing a game called Doki Doki Literature Club. These are my final thoughts having you know, beaten the game this past Tuesday. If this is your first time here or you missed the streams and you wanted to see them, hit the i card here. That will take you to the playlist with the replays of the past three weeks. Now, for those of you that don't know, Doki Doki Literature Club is a free game over on, it's on Steam. And uh, it's a kind of a, it starts off looking kind of like one of those anime dating simulator type games uh, where just through reading text, you're basically trying to see which girl you can get, get to be your girlfriend kind of a thing. But you're in this literature club that was, uh, that's definitely got more to it than meets the eye. Um, I am going to go ahead and talk about spoilers because, like I said, these are my final thoughts. So if you have not played the game um, or you've not watched someone play the game, if you want to be able to play it yourself blind, don't watch this video. <laughs> so what did I think of it overall? Well, man, <laughs> the first three hours I have to admit, I was actually kind of starting to get a little bit bored, but I think it was because it sh was showing no indication of what was what the big deal was. Because, you know, when you open up the game, there's that disclaimer saying it's got disturbing content. It has that psychological horror tag on Steam. And I was a little disappointed that, that first week. Um, played it for about two and a half hours. And it was just like playing a dating simulator. I was like, okay, whatever. And my, my biggest beef with it was that I couldn't read the poems I was writing. <laughs> it's kind of embarrassing, but I guess I have to. I want to see it! What did we write? <laughs> Week two, when things took that turn for the worse with um, Sayuri committing suicide. That, that was hard. Once I realized they were really delving into this depression thing, I immediately thought, oh no, something's going to happen to her. And I was right. That, that one was hard. But everything that happened after that, all the weird glitches and bleeding from eyes and all that weird stuff, it was still disturbing and a little freaky, but it didn't have that same emotional punch as Sayuri's death did. You know, with Sayuri's, that felt very natural. Like, it just, it, it didn't feel forced. Um, it, it felt like, you know, she was in, quote unquote, control of those circumstances you know it was it was an organic circumstance with her it didn't feel like it was being put on her by something outside with Yuri <laughs> that was so it, it was so uncharacteristic for her and it got so extreme that it really did feel like it wasn't her fault the choices were being taken away from her Monica's influence was full bore. It was definitely this sinister outside force pushing her to this extreme. It was tragic, but in a different way. And, and it, it didn't, like I said, it didn't pack the same emotional punch. As the mystery began to resolve, <laughs> or be solved, I should say, it, as it became more and more apparent that, yeah, Monica's the bad guy here, that horror and disgust W was replaced by genuine awe at the sheer design factor of this game. Files deleting themselves and that being worked into the storyline, that build up for the ending was, I, I was just blown away by the coding <laughs> genius that was in that game. And for it to be something that's just free on Steam, I mean, I was, I was really, really impressed by it. Disturbing as heck. Not a game I would recommend to anyone, you know, in a blanket statement. I'm not going to say, go play this game. Depending on the person, I might say, hey, I think you might enjoy this game if you like freaky things. <laughs> and man, when you finally hear Monica at the end, that, that, I can't remember if I got chills, but I'm kind of getting chills remembering it. <laughs> it was, I just found it so ironic that it was Monica who's the one who has the only vocal part in the game. 
because at the beginning of my second week, I'd been thinking, you know, it'd be f- if I were to, you know, cast voice actors for these characters, who would I pick? I came up with picks for three of the girls, everyone but Monica. I could not think of what Monica's voice should sound like. And so hearing a voice, the, the designer took care of that. <laughs> you know, they, they got uh, great voice actors. I was actually really disappointed when I looked her up on IMDb that this was the only thing she's done. It was really very well played and uh, really a, a good performance and just it, it, it was very tasteful in how and where it was put into the game. So I think, I think that worked really well. But I think I would not have enjoyed this game nearly as much if I hadn't been doing it on stream. Having uh, people in the chat, people who have played the game before, giving me hints, giving me suggestions, and just um, helping, you know, reminding me, hey, look, look back there, or, hey, go check out the, the game files. And I think just the community aspect, that's what really made me enjoy the game. That, that's what made this whole thing be such a, I guess, a positive experience. It was just, it was so cool having people in the chat, getting to know new people also. I mean, most of the people who were talking to me have not watched my stuff before. So, I mean, that, that was, that was, I think was the really cool part, that this bizarre, <laughs> brilliantly made game is able to bring complete strangers together and, and form a, you can have community built around it. Yeah, I honestly, I probably would have stopped after Sayori because that was, like I said, it was very disturbing, very tragic. But if it hadn't been for the community there, I, yeah, I, I wouldn't have stuck around at that after that point, I think. Or maybe I would have, I don't know. It's, it's hard to say, but I, I, I can't imagine what it would have been like playing it by myself, you know? So yeah, I mean, those are my, my final thoughts on Doki Doki Literature Club. Definitely not for everyone. I do not, I, I cannot stress enough how seriously those disclaimers should be taken, even though the first three hours of gameplay looks like nothing of the sort, because once stuff hits the fan, it goes everywhere. <laughs> I mean, it. yeah, the, the whole second, what would that be, two thirds of the game is well worth those warnings. But yeah, it was overall, it was a fun experience playing it. I've never played a game like that before. So yeah, it was it was a fun, different <laughs> experience. So that's all I have to say about that. Thank you for watching. Again, thank you to everyone who hung out with me during those streams. I will continue to stream here on this channel uh, every Tuesday from 6 to 8 p.m. Mountain Time. Um, I think for this coming week, uh, I think I'm gonna go back to just playing my, my old standby from Twitch, Realm of the Mad God. So look forward to seeing you guys there. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see you next time.